you know it's really easy to get just you know get stuck in your own mind and just forget about all the positive things in your yeah, life like, it's important not to get so frustrated with yourself and you know get angry at yourself for not doing that i think because it's really easy to think oh why am i doing this i'm so shit like what am i doing with myself because then you just feel worse no, yeah you know? we do buy massive packs of water for the van that's we really love yours like, yeah. <laughs> staying hydrated <laughs> staying hydrated is cool i try to run like a few times a week and I'd say that's mine like get all my energy out and just do that and then yeah. feel pretty good afterwards we've, we've got a gym who i go to that's really important for me i think i get you know mentally you get quite cooped up in your in your brain if you're not releasing that physical energy i think traveling all over these different cities and countries and seeing how other people work in different places like we, we were so lucky to be able to get that experience at so young welcome to the collaborative resource hub by wellness provisions our mission is to bridge the gap between mental health wellness and music specifically rock and roll i'm amy mcbride owner of wellness provisions the most badass wellness business Wellness Provision supplies rock and rollers with high quality supplements. We give you a trustworthy place to go where you can essentially shop blindfolded. Our wellness kits were created out of a need to simplify your shopping experience and make it stress-free. You'll get the most effective nutrients in the least amount of bottles with the least trial and error. Immerse yourself in the Collaborative Resource Hub by going to our website where you'll have access to helpful resources that can nudge you in the right direction. Let's inspire each other if that guy did it, so can you. Find the Collaborative Resource Hub interviews on YouTube, all major podcast platforms, and subscribe to our newsletter to stay in the loop. Last but not least, my legal disclaimer, nothing in this interview or the Collaborative Resource Hub substitutes medical advice. Please connect with your GP if you need medical guidance. Jack and Sid from Grade 2, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, cheers for having us. Yeah, uh, I'm excited to chat with you guys. I just recently found out about your band and I, I like genuinely, I really like your music. So this is cool. Thank you very much. I'm glad you like it. Yeah. So if you guys had to describe grade two to someone who has not heard you before, how would you describe your band? What's that one? Punk, rock and roll. <laughs> Straight up. Fast, hard and great. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, really, just like, he sold it. Yeah, straight up punk. Yeah, you know, mel melodic punk is a good one as well. We have, a, we like a lot of melody in our music, but, um, and keep it, you know, hard and fast at the same time. I think that's yeah. something we do quite well. Cool. Uh, what are your live shows like? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love a good live show. We, yeah. Yeah. We, Energetic. Yeah. There's a lot of energy. We try to, like, basically bring everything to the stage because all we do in the van is sleep all day between shows so like when we get on the stage that's one hour it's like yeah that's your workout for the hour so give it what you've got for that one hour and then you can die again all day the next day yeah pretty much go go mad yeah that's that's what i'd say just full of energy <laughs> So do you guys, it's a good, that's a good segue into like well-being then. Um, do you, when you're on tour, do you take advantage of the downtime and do you sleep? Do you, is that important to you? Do you notice a benefit? Oh yeah, massively. Yeah. I mean, we don't, we don't do it nearly as much as we should. That is like, take care of us. Ourselves on tour, we're really bad for it actually. But, you know, in the, on the journeys in the van is when we sleep the most. You know, we'll spend, if we have got a 12 hour drive, I'll spend like half of it asleep. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because yeah, it's a lot of like late nights and early mornings. So you're by the time you finish the set, packed down and loaded out, say it'll be like 2 a.m. and then you've got to be up and on the road again at say 8. So by the time you're back at where you're staying and, and you've got up and got ready to go again, you've really only slept for like five or six hours. And everyone's like, oh, it must be luxury touring when really it's like you're just running off minimal sleep trying to get shit done and not forget anything yeah i mean five or six hours is generous you know? yeah i know yeah, you know most of the time you barely get any but um yeah i mean as well as sleep it's just things like you know you're drinking a lot you're like you're not eating properly you're eating you're just eating like fast foods every day McDonald's all day boozing every night so like you can so easily just get really ill if you're not careful and like i do it every time don't i yeah it's always me i'm always the one who gets ill like just such an idiot i don't I, I try, I feel like I look after myself. Yeah, he's the one that looks after himself the most and sort of knows it's coming. Yeah, yeah. And could literally eat five a day, smoothies, drink healthy, and he'll still be the one that falls ill. So, yeah. <laughs> that usually is the case, isn't it? And you get away with it somehow. Well, not always. Yeah. Always. But, um, but, yeah, exactly. I think 
we always try sleep when we can but most of the sleeping is probably done in the van yeah to be honest. yeah I mean it kind of I mean it kind of makes sense though because you're just you're busy really I mean you're doing yeah work. you're on your on hours do you so do you guys like to drink water do you like hydrate does that help lessen the blow if you know oh, no yeah we do buy massive packs of water for the van that's we really love yours yeah. love <laughs> love staying hydrated <laughs> staying hydrated is cool man uh yeah you always get a massive crate yeah you? it's got to be 24 bottles every time and we're normally buying them every two days really yeah yeah rinse rinse through the water it's really important like it's so easy to forget isn't it like not to drink properly but especially in the summer if you're touring yeah, in the summer yeah I was about to say but then the bottles get really warm and then it's horrible <laughs> so then you come across that problem of you what you know you need to drink water but do you really want to touch that because <laughs> it tastes like plastic no nah, yeah the bottles have been rolling around the back of the van for like weeks and just sitting in the hot blazing sun yeah. just... <laughs> oh, that's, that's, so that's a real dilemma yeah I love those bottles man. yeah <laughs> that is that's a, yeah you want to pack it with you but then they're in plastic bottles and then how do you easily, you know what, that's an interesting dilemma. Maybe someone else who's watching this can chime in with like a problem solving idea for yeah, this. This is like first world problems. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not the biggest dilemma. You can just buy more. But <laughs> I guess so. I guess, but the, yeah, I guess if you're at stores, you just keep buying more water. Um, usually we don't. Yeah, it seems like a waste. Yeah. Right. Do you, so if you are like, I guess, you know, like drinking or partying or whatever, like after shows, or during shows, um, do you ever try and like hydrate or, you know, eat healthy before, like, do you try and like incorporate anything to make it so that like you feel better? I really want to make this try and sound good, but honestly, yeah. no. No, be honest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. The thought is always there. It's like, oh, I could really do with a salad or like, oh, I could like use these electrolytes or something. But when you've rocked up in a new town, everyone welcomes you and they're like, oh, you have to try our local beer. You have to try this. We have the best barbecue in town. And it's like, yeah, yeah. well, consider me sold. I'll have a beer and <laughs> I'll have a burger. <laughs> so That's true, actually, because people always want you to try the local food. As yeah, well. so you come across that. And you don't want to be rude and say, like, <laughs> oh, look, I've had burgers all week, so I'm not going to have one in your town. <laughs> Give me a salad. But, yeah. It just doesn't happen. No, yeah, it's true. That it's always there, but I think we're quite, uh, in that sense, a little bit weak-minded where we, we yeah, fall, yeah. fall to the temptation of having the dirty food but um i mean we do we do a bit like you know we have a rule uh don't eat two hours before you go on stage yeah um same. because you i mean that's not really for your health more just make sure you don't throw up on stage <laughs> yeah <laughs> the second you start jumping around it is not a good feeling did you guys actually did that happen so then you're like oh this needs to be a rule now <laughs> Oh, we'll throw up on stage. Thankfully not. Yeah. I, I had to throw up and make myself throw up before a gig once because we ate, you know, too soon before a show. Um, but lucky we haven't done it on stage yet. You just feel really groggy. Like when we come on and you want to like start jumping around and moving. And when you've just eaten, you're automatically like, oh, actually stay on your side. I'll stay on mine. And we'll, we'll just wait. Like, I'm not ready for this. Yeah, yeah yeah your body's busy like digesting and it's not putting energy into like you know being human or extra yeah or like go lay down don't do this <laughs> yeah it's rough <laughs> um what are some ways that you guys uh stay balanced and like manage your stress levels mm, stress levels good question yeah i don't know while I mean, on tour or just generally just generally Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, I mean, um, I think exercise is really important. Um, when, when we're back home, you run a lot, don't you? Yeah, I'll, I'll just run. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've got a gym here I go to when it, whenever it's open anyway. Can't right now. But uh, that's really important for me. I think I get, you know, mentally you get quite cooped up in your, in your brain if you're not releasing that physical energy, I think. So that really helps me. Cool. Yeah, I don't think it's the same, like running. Yeah. I try to run like, a few times a week and I'd say that's mine. Like, get all my energy out and just do that and yeah. feel pretty good afterwards and then uh, I guess we do uh, do like drinking that helps release the stress yeah. <laughs> working for the weekend <laughs> you know wind down on the weekend yeah it does help have you guys ever been interested in like meditation or anything like that yeah actually I tried that for quite a while before um and uh, I I got kind of far but I tried it for about a month and I did quite enjoy it and it was really good. I, I think I, I made a bit of progress. Um, but after a month, I kind of just lost interest. And I just kind of gave up on it. 
kind of wish I didn't. I've tried it again once or twice since, but I've never really fully got back into it. Is that something you've done yourself or? Yeah, I started getting into it like, I don't know, maybe a year ago or something. And I was doing it all the time. And then Mm. same kind of thing. I just sort of like fell away from it for a while. And then I started again a month ago, actually, just over a month ago. And I'm doing it twice a day, morning and evening, 20 minutes each. And I've told myself um, it's non-negotiable. And that word, seriously, makes a huge difference. Yeah, that's a good idea because it's so easy to just not do it. You know, I think the discipline is the hardest bit, isn't it? So how how have you found that... um, sorry i'm not the one interviewing you but how do you find that that <laughs> resulted for you because like i'm really interested in like the results for that you know i don't think i gave it enough time so maybe it should be something i could reconsider yeah i mean well first of all it's a conversation so it does not need to be like a standard question answer okay. interview. <laughs> that's good then i'm more comfortable with that <laughs> yeah. um but yeah the meditation like it's interesting because my perspective on it has changed what it is now than what it was like even a year ago, like when I started. So like before it was like, oh, I know it's good for you. It's supposed to help you relax. It was all of these, like you see the bullet points, you know, of like what it's supposed to do. But then, Mm -hmm. and I think that's why I didn't stick with it, but then something changed. And now I guess I've noticed that even if I show up the discipline, like it could be like a super shitty meditation. Like my brain just can't turn off. I'm constantly like redirecting thoughts into, I guess, pushing the thoughts away rather. Yeah. Um, So it's just a busy kind of like noisy meditation, but I showed up and I sat through the whole thing. So to me, I'm like, okay, I I accomplished it. I still did it. Sometimes I have the ones where it's like legit, like I'm just, it's just quiet. It's mellow, like in my head, like I'm not thinking about anything very few times do I have to like course correct and let go of thoughts. And but so those are the ones you want, right? Those are like the good ones that shows that it's working. Like. Yeah. But what's yeah. interesting is even like, cause everyone says like, oh, meditation is hard. I'm not doing it right. What the fuck is it anyway? <laughs> but, and there's so many different yeah, kinds, right. <laughs> there's different kinds, but like basically I mean, it's really hard, really hard to completely turn your brain off. So the point Mm -hmm. is just when you notice you're like thinking, and as soon as you're like, oh, wait, I'm, this is a thought that's happening, let it go. And then just focus on your breath again. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I found as well. Like for me, it was focusing on the breathing. As soon as you think about something, I just think about like my lungs expanding and de-expanding, whatever the word is. Um, And that like, it's just imagining that just really helps. I think just like an image in your brain because otherwise I find you can't just think about nothing I have to think about something and I think breathing is something you have to focus on isn't it yeah or there's like some like you know if you just have a word or I guess that's why a lot of people do the ohm thing because it's not a word that has like a visual meaning so it's something Uh, that you can have in your head but it's not attached to anything Uh, oh that's interesting I didn't know that But yeah, like the, just focusing on your breath. So, I mean, that is, that literally is the practice of meditation. And Mm -hmm. for me, I realized it's helped with my patience, anger, um, just overall, like responding. I feel just more composed, I guess, a little bit. Yeah, that's that's really good. Do you feel it's made you um, more like less, like a, you know, less procrastinating, like, do you feel that's helped with procrastination at all? Is that I don't have irrelevant? that problem. Oh, okay, so you're you're good anyway. <laughs> yeah, not on procrastinating, but like on I still end up quitting things. So like commitment and dedication. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's why like calling it this time, like it's I'm doing non-negotiable meditating twice a day for a hundred days. And the hundred days I'll reassess and oh. see if I want to keep doing more because you get that pride, you know, like when you're doing something and you're accomplishing something. So it feels good. Yeah. Yeah. It feels really good when you actually stick to it and like manage to do it. I mean, while the gyms have been closed, I've been doing like, I told myself I do like a hundred press-ups a day every single morning and I haven't missed a single morning yet. And that's probably the first time I've done something once a day consistently. So I'm quite, quite proud of that. It's only little, but it's something, you know. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How many days are you in on doing that? I haven't counted at all, but I, um, I mean, I'd say over a month. Okay. So maybe six weeks or so. Do you feel like that helps you with committing more if you're not like 
strictly keeping track? Um, yeah, I'm, I don't, yeah, I don't really get too caught up in like counting the days. That's not yeah. really something I'm bothered about. As long as I'm doing it, I'm happy. Do you know what I mean, I don't, I'm not really, don't really mind about that. It's interesting because like for my brain, I have like, I made a piece of paper and there's a hundred circles on it. And so every X, like the line of an X is morning, evening. And so like that uh, helps me like, know like, okay, I'm doing this. So it's just interesting mm -hmm. how your brain, you know. That's pretty cool to be fair. Yeah, it's probably a better method, I think. Cause if you, and then you can visualize it, you know, and then you, and then when you miss a day, you feel guilty, right? Well, so, that's it. Got that circle. <laughs> so I, I think that might help actually just to, you know, persuade you a bit more if you're ever feeling lazy. So yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. Sid, do you have any challenges like that that you're doing? Uh, <laughs> not really. I just, yeah. <laughs> I just start. But now you start one. Four times a week and that's it. As long as I yeah. run four times a week, I'm good. Yeah, that's, that's a challenge in itself. But that's good. Yeah, I guess so. That's really good. That's how my aim was just to do that. And, and I want to run a half marathon in May. So that's mm, sure, trying yeah. to get to that. That's, that's awesome. my goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I forgot you're still doing that. You did um you did 10k the other day, right? Yeah. So a half marathon is 20 21 kilometers. So I've actually never ran that far. My legs can't hack it. But I'm like, there's Adi, I reckon they can. Yeah, Adidas this app I used to run have got like a virtual marathon. And I signed up to like a few of their challenges, just to like monthly goals. And that one come up, I was just like, oh, gonna have to do it. This yeah. is flashed up now. It's like it's a sign. You can't <laughs> just scroll past that. No, one, and it kept yeah. coming up as well. It was like yeah. the main one. And I was just like, right, I'm gonna have to do it. It's made to be. I probably won't be able to walk for like a week afterwards, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. Yeah, man, it's good. Well, you mentioned electrolytes, so make sure that you drink those before and if you do any hydration during or whatever, and then after. So, you know, just do like proper things like that to give yourself the opportunity to do well. I know. I tell myself that and then I kind of do it for a little bit and then just stop. <laughs> I don't like the powders. Like Some of them taste all right and then the other ones are just horrible. So I start, do I really want to drink that today? I think not. <laughs> I'll just stick with the water. Maybe I'll send you some packets of the kind that I sell because they're really good and they're all like food sourced nutrients. So it's not like- Oh, you, make, you sell some nice. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I sell, so my business, I do this stuff and then I sell supplements. Oh, cool. No way, that's wicked. Yeah. Cool, we could maybe trade some of those for a t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah, when, it, when are you running it? So uh, now I'm committed. I've said it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's May second. May second. Okay. Maybe if I go to the post office tomorrow, they'll be at your place in time, so that you can oh, stuff your light packets. Yeah. In time. No, you definitely have to. Do it. <laughs> yeah. it is happening. Yeah, I yeah, know. Oh no. I thought, <laughs> what have I done? Yeah, that that would be amazing. Just start telling yourself that like you're gonna fucking dominate it, and it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, true. I'll try that. <laughs> As yeah. I'm like crawling along. I've yeah. got this. <laughs> yeah, man. Do right, you do. Are you are either of you guys down with like positive affirmations? Positive like, what? Affirmations. Like, I'm gonna dominate this fucking race or whatever. Just like telling yourself you're the best, like kind of vibe. Yeah. Yeah, I mean definitely um I can't say I'd do it, but I do. I do <laughs> come brushing your teeth in the morning. <laughs> You're gonna fucking smash it today. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, do it. I mean, if you no, do that, I think I think it sounds it sounds like a really good thing to be honest. Like, I think you can definitely convince yourself, and like as soon as you believe it, it becomes reality, doesn't it? You know, I'm, it's one of these things where like you're aware of it, but. I never have, uh, I never think to do these kind of things and never really think about it. So it's nice to talk about it with you. <laughs> yeah, maybe this uh, is a lifestyle change right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think it's something that you need to be reminded of because so many people forget about these things, you know, myself included. And um, I think it makes a big change, you know. It's really easy to get, just, you know, get stuck in your own mind and just forget about all the positive things in your yeah, life. Like, true. Yeah, I mean, because it's, it's brainwashing yourself with, good stuff and good thoughts and like you just said like what you're what you think like becomes like the reality you know that's it it's, it's it's crazy how you can change your perspective and it just becomes so real just by how you're thinking it's really really amazing we should start <laughs> filming like morning messages for each other yeah <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm up for that today's a good day jack yeah, <laughs> you've got this said i love that hair hairline <laughs> You guys really should. <laughs> I fully yeah, um, support that idea. It. 
Yeah, yeah, we'll send you some as well. Just every morning. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, we'll have a WhatsApp group and it'll just be like positivity. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually up for that. I'm yeah. not even joking. Yeah, no, you really can. I will How many like, of these WhatsApp groups have you got? Every interview you've done, you just started a new one. <laughs> you must be really busy all day like messaging people like you're so great <laughs> oh it's it's a template i just copy and paste it no <laughs> yeah, I was about to say that. yeah of course they so got a little machine does it for you <laughs> um how do you guys deal with rejection or adversity because undoubtedly that is always an obstacle in life just like bad shit happening or getting turned down from opportunities mm, good question yeah it's good actually um I I feel like, well, the biggest one we had recently was obviously COVID. We um we got the biggest tours of our lives. We had been building up to this moment for seven years, and then got the best dream tours we could ask for with Social Distortion, uh, Anti Flag, and all, all kinds of others. Um, and they all got taken away from us. Obviously, you know, hopefully they're all being they are being postponed and they are still happening. But at the time, it was like they'd just been stolen from us. And that was probably the biggest blow we've had no, yeah, definitely. as a man and in our personal lives, probably, you know, up there. Um, but I mean, I'll be honest, like, I, I feel like I cope with it relatively okay, considering the the level of, like, tragedy it was, you know what I mean? I, I, we, you know, we went back home, we started working at Tesco, it was pretty yeah, rough. I fell off the radar for months, I was yeah. so mad. It, like, was, it was hard, wasn't it? Yeah, I was just like, this is shit, like, completely. I was like, couldn't accept it for months. I, was like, I had all the dates I listed on a Google calendar. So each day it was just coming up like where we should have been. Mm. And I'm just working a night shift job, stacking shelves. Like, it was reminding like, like, us, like, wasn't it? Every day yeah. it's like, you're flying to here today. It's just like, no, we're not. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I think it took a while and it was just like, I, I'd actually stopped running phrases, funny enough. And then I started running again. And I think that actually helped quite a lot. And then that got me back writing music so i can't i'm not one of the people that can sit there and just start writing music on the spot but like i get a lot of ideas walking the dog or running i just have like this little lyric idea and it's like shit get home now pick up guitar like let's write this down mm. and i think it kind of got back to that point of like it's happened like move on like get some new ideas down and go from there and it was kind of like when when it was announced in the uk that they were saying they're hoping to have things back open again in the new year. So this was just before Christmas. This was all being said. It was like, right, we're halfway through this like shit show. It was like, everything's going to come around a lot quicker than expected. And I think by that point, it was just like, right, knuckle back down. And this is what you've got to get done. I'm not one of the people when I know I've got a goal to get to. It's like, I'm not going to not get to it. It's like that now has to be done before I move on to the next one. Mm. So I, I did it like that. That was just... I'd set a few things out and it was like once that was done, on to the next one and then yeah. kept going. Yeah. We got through it. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, in terms of actually dealing with the rejection at first, yeah, it definitely was rough on it. Maybe didn't deal with it as healthily as we could have. But I mean, I don't know, I feel like those kind of things, I, I'm, I'm kind of with the mindset like everything just happens, you know, it's out of your control. If these things happen and there's nothing you can do about it, and I kind of just suck it up and move on. Like, you know, just got to make the most out of the situation you're in. And that's what we did. No, yeah, it's true. Yeah. I mean, that's it. Like the things, um, they happen, but how you respond to it, that's what you can control. Exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah. It was like a real funny period in time. Just like one that obviously no one saw coming. And there was like no one to turn to, to ask anything because everyone else was in the same boat. Yeah. So yeah. it's just like, shit, no what do we actually do you had to learn to deal with it yeah. or else like, wasn't it? Like, yeah well that's awesome though said that you were able to like you and something clicked and you started like running again and then you started getting more ideas and stuff so that's awesome yeah a little silver lining yeah I guess, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, there's definitely been a lot there's been a lot of positivity from this as well there? no yeah like, it's, yeah from outside the point of view it doesn't look like that at all straight straight away but um actually loads of good things have happened you know we've been writing songs that we never would have written if we were away on tour right now you know who knows what you know i, I think if we were away on tour this whole time we maybe would have had a completely creative slump because we're not very active at writing on tour it's quite difficult because you're so busy obviously so we've had all this time at home i mean we had a mental sort of creative slump as well because of 
COVID, it was a bit hard to get in that zone. But once we did, we've been, you know, we've got so many great new songs that we're really, really happy with that we think are going to be potentially, you know, some of our best songs yet. And I, that probably wouldn't have happened without this whole situation. So, you know, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, and you, you guys have made the most of it and you've tapped into something that's allowed for positivity and like good stuff to come out of it. So not, not everyone can do that. So that's awesome that you guys have. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, you know, we learned a lot. Yeah. Learned a lot about ourselves along the way. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, very spiritual journey. Very reflective time, I think, wasn't it? it was, so yeah, there's a lot, a lot of positive things to take away from it. Yeah. What, um, are there, like that you learned about yourselves, does anything stand out specifically? Cool. <laughs> I mean, between the three of us, normally everything was just a joke. Like we'd always joke about everything. And I think now we we come home and went through that and like, we actually started to talk to each other a bit more seriously. Like, yeah. <laughs> not everything was just a joke. It was like, yeah, right, yeah. Like, we were classic boys. Like everything has to be a piss about and like, feelings are gay and you know that kind of <laughs> stupid i mean not to that sense but like we're, we're just like it's about about yeah. everything we, we wouldn't we wouldn't really have very serious conversations and after all this has happened obviously we were in such a shit way we had to just start talking to each other properly like you know making sure we're all all right you know talking things out and that helps a lot and i think yeah we probably we, we learned a lot in that sense as well to actually have you know treat things seriously when they need to be treated seriously yeah. you know yeah i mean because like humor is awesome sometimes but it can get so like deflective and like you're just basically in denial at, at some point you know yeah. so that's, that's exactly yeah, what it is basically what happened you just yeah you just use it to like fight off real scary stuff like you know just laugh it off <laughs> right. yeah but yeah. it's amazing what actually like talking about it it feels so much better i mean and but not all the time i mean if stuff's really heavy it's hard but like ultimately talking about it it's so much more productive so mass yeah. really does help yeah um what have you guys i guess like since your band started or like on your journeys as a band or personally like what have you learned i guess i mean that's a very broad question so take it as you will mm. what have we learned oh, yeah. um not to let people take advantage of you i would say We've had a lot of that, yeah. <laughs> haven't we? And that's because we were so young when we started. We were very naive, a bit immature, didn't really know how the world works, didn't really know how the music industry works. So, you know, we kind of went into it innocently, as you would when you're like 15, you know, think, yeah. of, it, think of it, everyone's our friends, and everyone's there for us. And most people are, most people really were. But, you know, it got to the point where a lot of people, you realise that they're, they're using you because they, they see... That you might be going somewhere so they latch onto that and they you know yeah a potential quick quid a lot yeah. of people i mean it's you know it's just how the business works really like there's no it's no bad blood but like you just got you just got to look out for yourself you've got to realize that this is sometimes it's business and you just have to be a bit firm with people and just just let people know where you stand and i yeah. think a lot of the time we're a bit a bit too friendly and just assuming everyone's a really nice guy not to say that, you know, I they're think, not, but it's, yeah, it, yeah, it just happens. You, just you don't really realise it at the time. So yeah. like, when we like step back and looked at a lot of things, it was like, oh, we didn't see that. Like, mm. like don't always take everything at, like, I don't know what the phrase is, like. Don't take things for granted? No, like, no. For, like the first way you look at something, that's how it is. Yeah, no, not how you first see it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it, you know, stand your ground a little bit, you know, don't, don't let yeah. people walk over you. Yeah. I'd actually that's the biggest one. Yeah, that's, that's the main one. We've yeah. like definitely. Boundaries. <laughs> Having good boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, we all grew up together as well. Like, we've grown up within the band. Like, it was from when we left school to now. So we've gone through, like, our teens into, like, our 20s, travelling the world. Like, very, like, very fortunate to be in that position. I reckon, like, we learned a lot about probably not as much as we should have but a lot about other cultures like obviously a lot about ourselves being able to do that as well mm, yeah it's really it's really fascinating traveling all over these different cities and countries and seeing how other people work in different places like we, we were so lucky to be able to get that experience at so young you know and again we were so young and i we didn't really care give a shit at the time we were just there for a party but you know looking back you do remember it and you, it does make an impact you know Traveling is so important, I think, to really understand how the rest of the world works. 
I mean, yeah. we've only been to Europe, Europe and America so far. So, you know, so, so much more to discover. Yeah. You know, Asia is high up on my bucket list. I need to go to Asia so bad. I'd love to see it. But, um, you know, it's really, really a beautiful thing. What other places, like, would you guys want to go to once touring opens up? If you could, like, pick wherever you wanted to go. Well, sure. South America. Mm. I'd say. Anywhere in particular. Oh, I don't know. I, I've seen, like, a lot of the shows that are in Colombia and Brazil, and they just look crazy. Yeah. That's a, just somewhere I'd love to go. And I'd say the same for even Russia as well. Like, yeah. We're looking at going there next year, but I'd say that's another place. That'd be crazy. I'd love to see them. That's awesome. Have you guys played uh, Spain? I'm sure you have. Yeah, we played there a few times, but really only the east of Spain. We played like Madrid, Barcelona and Bilbao in, and around the Basque country. So we haven't ventured into other cities, but... No, yeah, it's true, actually. We haven't gone too far into Spain, but we yeah. haven't been there. We've been to Barcelona a couple of times, haven't we? Yeah, I think we've played Barcelona three times, Madrid three times as well. Was it? Yeah. I think. And we played Basque Country quite a lot, so probably five times. Yeah, it's not Spain though. Basque Country is not Spain. We learned that. Do not I ever say that. Basically, every province is in Spain because Barcelona and Catalonia, that's not really Spain either. So oh, I don't know what's, what. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? When, they all we want made to that it. Fake when we first went there and we posted this post and was like, oh, we've arrived in Spain. <laughs> and it was like, no, you haven't. You've arrived in Basque Country. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fun, fun fact as well is when we um, wrote one of our first, one of the songs for our first music video, we did All I Know. Um, one of the lyrics is travel to Northern Spain or something. And that was a, in reference to Basque Country because at the time we didn't know it was Basque Country. Yeah. I, I wrote the lyrics and I just thought it was Spain. So I was talking about some of the places we'd been and I was thinking about Basque Country. I said Northern Spain. So the lyric is actually, you know, blasphemy. And now it's, <laughs> and now it's in our music forever. So I'm very sorry, Basque people. Um, well, <laughs> when you do the song live, just change it to like Basque Country if you can. Yeah, yeah we will. Um, Hamburg, yeah. Paris, maybe Basque Country. <laughs> it works. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, do you guys ever take breaks from social media or screens or anything? Do you have discipline for that? Rarely, but I have done it. Yeah, I come off Facebook for a while because I was sat on Facebook just watching people get their hair cut. And I was like, why am I watching eight hours a day of people get their hair cut? <laughs> eight hours? Yeah, my screen time was through the roof. <laughs> I was just sat there watching like, Jeez. I don't want to be a barber. So yeah. I don't know why I was watching it. <laughs> just like, wow, look at this skin face. Like, <laughs> fucking stupid <laughs> so i come off that for a few months and i did actually get to a point where i was like oh i need to get my screen time down but then i just gave up on that as well mm. so yes and no yeah I, I had a break recently um where me and my girlfriend said we'll just put our phones down for like after like 6 p.m we'll just have the evening just to ourselves you know we play some chess and then we didn't look at them until the morning so that was like maybe a six hour period about our phones, which doesn't seem like much, but like, that's probably the best I've done in a long time. So it felt good. Yeah. And I would definitely, would, I want to do more of that because I'm so addicted and I hate it. Mm -hmm. I always catch myself just like, I get angry at my phone. I stop looking, I just like throw it at my bed, like just in frustration, like stop looking at nothing in particular, like haircuts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the problem is haircuts. Yeah, no, it's, it's really, it's very frustrating and it's such a, such a terrible addiction. Like, and it's, it's really scary because everyone is addicted to this. No, like, it's crazy. It's literally everyone. Um, so, yeah, it's a really terrifying thing. I think you should definitely try limit yourself whenever you can. My phone tells me how many times I pick it up. Uh, really? And I get like a weekly update of like my screen time and how many times I pick it up and I just choose not to look at it. <laughs> it's like 20,000. Yeah, I saw the other day, it's like your screen time went up by 80%. I was like, oh, no, that's, that, that's not good. Yeah, it's rough. <laughs> you know, yeah. especially... So many things you could be doing you could be reading a book you could be learning a new instrument you could be learning a language like it, it's just i mean at the same time though you know it's important not to get so frustrated with yourself and you know get angry at yourself for not doing that i think because it's really easy to think oh why am i doing this i'm so shit like what am i doing with myself because then you just feel worse you know i think it's like such a a toxic cycle yeah. isn't it you know you feel shit so then you just do nothing again because you feel shit and then you feel worse for doing I it i literally did that earlier i was on yeah. my phone i was looking at it, so i was like oh the sun's out <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh. yeah yeah so I mean, it's important to like forgive yourself for not being you know for 
for not doing all these productive things that you could be doing you know no one's that perfect but like um yeah it's 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 rough <laughs> yeah it is i mean like it's a compulsion though because like uh two weeks ago i decided i uninstalled it from my phone instagram from my phone which I hate social media. I never wanted to be on it, but with my business, everyone was like, you gotta be. And I was like, okay. So I finally got on Instagram like a year ago, but like, um, with the business, I feel like I'm supposed to be always on it doing something, but yeah. so I had it uninstalled from, I checked it Saturday morning, uninstalled it. And then Saturday night and Sunday night, like I checked it just on my computer, just if there were messages or something I had to tend to. And then I didn't reinstall it until Monday afternoon just before a post like my monday post so it was like dude it felt amazing it felt yeah like, that's a long time <laughs> it was incredible and is that just you just uninstall instagram itself but you still use your phone for other stuff it's just instagram that you're against or like yeah well because i mean i don't i don't have any apps on my phone like i don't do like i text people or email okay. or instagram like that's all i use my phone for that's good yeah so yeah yeah so what you can go you go like a week or week at a time nearly without it well and that's what i realized i was like man that was like half a week i mean the short yeah. side of half a week but like and i did it again this past weekend same thing i reinstalled it uh this morning today like a few hours ago to do my post today um, yeah nice yeah and but like yeah. once you do it you realize like I'll, like something clicks and like you don't even miss it you just like remember the things you used to do and you just do those things yeah yeah that's that's exactly it once you get out of that cycle you're never going to want to go back you know so um yeah that's really good actually i think so do you use your instagram is it just business you have do you have a personal one as well or do you not have that at all yeah, yeah just nice. good. that's good i mean because yeah, it's, it's, cool it's frustrating isn't it because you actually do need social media if you're doing a business yeah today you have to though we have to it's, we wouldn't be anywhere without facebook yeah, and instagram that's, that's how we got started that's how people got to know us so yeah it's uh, quite frustrating like you sometimes you actually do need it um so yes yeah, it's, it's hard to do more of a cycle just can't get out of it yeah so. no I would, I would quit but then the band would fail yeah. <laughs> so. and i also like i a buddy of mine he's helped me change my perspective of social i still like I mean, ugh, I have, it's, it's a love hate relationship, but like, I'm trying to like embrace, like I've made good friends from it. I've developed really good, like relationships with people. And like, it's, it's been like a wonderful tool to like connect and grow and stuff. So I try and focus on that. And then like, it helps me hate it less and feel like less gross and bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Cause there is so many positive sides to it, obviously. But the problem is, is that the the negatives seem to heavily outweigh the the positives don't they yeah. like so and you you end up not even using the positive side of it you end up just forgetting about that completely so yeah because negativity is actually like i mean that's like a random tangent but like it seems to be what people are most drawn to the negative stuff like everyone complains more than they you know say positive things about like how's your day oh this sucks instead of like my day's fucking awesome you know like we just gravitate to like the shit it's so true, yeah, you, always, true yeah. you always focus on the bad shit don't you it's, it's so frustrating you know if if you have a really great day loads of cool stuff could have happened and one person pisses you off you're going to be thinking about that person all day and not about all the lovely things that happens you know what i mean and it's just like, why do we work like that? It's so annoying. <laughs> yeah, your brain or like ego is just there to like, it's just like quicksand is just like, come join me in this crap down below. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just give in, you just can't help it. Like, yes. Yeah. Do you guys spend yeah. much time in nature? We actually, you know, we live on an island. You know, we live on like very nature heavy place. You know, we've got lovely beaches. We've got yeah, like loads of countryside. Lovely stuff countryside. Like so like, we're so lucky that. I mean, yeah, we don't do it enough, do we? I started traveling yeah. around a lot more recently. We recently went a little adventure, didn't no, we? That's true, yeah. We went and went to the beach. Like, it's really, we've got some lovely cliffs up on our island, like massive rocks in the sea. Went on a little day trip and that was gorgeous. Like, it's so nice to see. It's like one of those things though, when people live in a city and they don't go into the city center, we have the same thing. We live near all these things that people want to come and see. But because we live near it, we don't go there. Yeah. It's like one of those things when really like, we'd probably take it all for granted. Yeah, 100%. But um, no, I mean, when we do 
occasionally go on a nice walk like it's such a nice thing and like it really makes you feel so good at the end of the day when you know you've gone out and like just yeah. seen seen the nice sights because yeah, there's, so nice there. yeah. there's so much around here really a great place to visit cool so i'd say that's our time in nature <laughs> yeah you know we live in nature <laughs> yeah <laughs> um that's awesome yeah like i live at the beach and i i'm three like three miles from the beach i'm so close and uh nice. i don't go that much but i went this morning and saw the sunrise it was real pretty oh nice mm -hmm. nice where where'd you live you in boston no i'm in uh, north carolina actually oh I thought you said oh, yeah, boston. I was. yeah okay east cool coast. i was right east coast yeah 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 oh no oh no we went there as well north carolina yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we played in a uh, chapel hill that's it yeah. oh cool yeah, that's yeah, okay. a good spot. A lot of bands play there. Mm. Yeah, it was cool. It was a pretty dead gig, to be honest. But <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Actually, yeah, take yeah. that back. Yeah, there wasn't that many people there. No, Nobody knew us, but we had a good time. Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> we, still, year... we still played our little hearts out. What year was that? When, when were you guys there? 2019. Oh. Yeah, I got a nice haircut there, actually. I remember that. Back of the haircut. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, there's a thing. He's obsessed. And I went to Waffle House and I ate it in under two minutes because I was nearly late for my haircut appointment. <laughs> so I we filmed a time lapse of how quick I could eat a full Waffle House meal. And it was in under two minutes. Was I there? I don't remember that. No, it was just Johnny. He was just like, <laughs> can I film a time lapse? I was like, I'll do it. Just ate like the waffle in like two halves. Just like beautiful, man. Yeah. Did you throw up after? Because I can't like. Oh, I, I was fully satisfied. I was good to go. That was me. <laughs> that wow. is the fastest you'll ever meet. Yeah. Right? It's impressive. That is impressive. Waffle House and under two minutes. Those are two. That's yeah, that's I know. I'm gonna combo. make an Instagram trend with that. <laughs> <laughs> Time lapse to Waffle House. <laughs> um, do you guys have any like final like words of wisdoms or anything you would like to, you know, pass on to people? I've still been trying to think about this quote since we started talking. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, oh, shit. I forgot about the quote. Yeah, should we say the quote? Yeah, one? I'll fast forward to that question. Yeah, what? I've been so focused on that. Just like, <laughs> I've got to have one. Make up your own one. No, actually, there's one. I heard it in the film, and in the film, they said it was Buddha that said it. So I don't know how true this is, but it was a great quote. And it was, I'm the one with my eyes wide open while the rest of you are still sleeping. And I love that one. That's a good one. Yeah. I, I like that. That's really good. It's Apparently, it's Buddha, but I've not actually Googled it. I just heard it in a film. <laughs> Could be, man. So that's like Buddhism, is it? That kind of mentality. I think so, yeah. I'm going to double check that after this and make sure that is an actual quote. <laughs> Even if not, I like it. Yeah, it works. Yeah, it's the whole like enlightened, you know, concept. Makes sense. It's yeah. good. Right. Yeah, keep, keep your eyes peeled. Um, and yeah, my one was, if I can word it correctly, um, the man, a man who cuts the wood warms himself twice, I believe it was. If that makes any sense. Yeah, because like, you get... Oh, because he's hot from then. Yeah, you know, warms himself up cutting the wood, he uses the wood to, to light like, the fire. Oh, nice. So um, that is a great one. I like yeah, that's a good, good, good metaphor for putting the work in and you will reap the rewards. Reap the rewards more more so than you would. No, you cut the wood and you just have to like that. <laughs> <laughs> so you said to impress. Shit. Far out. Do you guys have anything uh cool coming up that you wanna share on or we actually do, don't we? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've got some new tunes coming out at some point. Um I don't actually know when, but there mm. is some new stuff coming. And we're going to be back on tour this year, finally. But that's not till December, so we've got a bit of a wait. But it is happening. We are coming back. Yeah, we've we've got a tour booked for yeah UK, and then we're planning to go back to Europe later in the year next year. Yeah, and then hopefully back to the states yeah. at some point. Um, so th yeah, things are happening. Is it all depends on how COVID pans out, but things are looking up. Yeah, we've got we've got a plan in place, and hopefully it will stick to it. And um, yeah. Stay tuned for more. The light is at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. And when in doubt, just go running. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. All you right. go running. I'll do yeah, my press-ups. You, press you do your meditation. Yeah. Then we'll be golden. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, guys, for taking the time to chat. Uh, it's been super fun. I've enjoyed it. And you guys have some good 
insights into wellness. Even if you don't practice all of it, you know, and that's the first step. <laughs> it is, yeah. We're, we're aware. We just need to be, yeah, we need to practice more, I think, right? Yeah. But honestly, Amy, this has genuinely been a nice reminder. So thank you as well, because I feel like I'll, I will try and go away and practice this stuff more now, because I've, I've before this conversation, I completely forgot about all of this. I used to remind myself quite a lot. So that's been a really nice reminder. So thank you for that. I'm honestly going to start with the daily videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's just going to be pissing me off every day now. Good morning. <laughs> Today the sun is shining. Let's go get them. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. <laughs> We're going to close out. Bye. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> Ciao.